What is going on YouTube? It's Dirt Track Dave here again with another informative dirt late model tech tip video. Today we're going to be talking about the left rear suspension. How you can tune on it, how it acts, and how it responds to other corners in the car. Before we get started, if you're not a subscriber, I would be glad to have you. So click that icon in the bottom right hand corner of your screen. Hit that subscribe button. That way you can keep up with all the dirt late model content on my channel. So without further ado, let's get into some dirt late model left rear suspension. So here's your left rear at work. Let's watch what's happening. Let's enter in the corner, dips down, back in the gas, rear end separates. A lot of movement goes on in the left rear, more than any other corner of the car. Enters the corner, off the gas, back on the gas, separates, plants that left rear tire, digs off the corner. So here we got a drawing of your left rear suspension. You've got your upper rod, your lower rod, your bird cage, and your four-link brackets. Just for demonstration purposes, I've got a little extra holes in there so we can kind of tune on it and show you how some things work. So here I animated the left rear's movement. That way you'll have a visual reference to see what's going on. Now, just note that the left rear spraying, its sole purpose is just to keep the left rear from setting down when the car is just sitting statically. And two is to provide preload and bite to the left rear. That's it. I mean, anything else is just based off thrust angle and the torque arm and the left rear working together. So let's take a look at some numbers while the car is in full droop. Now, here we got our rods and we got our ZX axis, Z being up and down, X being front to rear. Now we're going to click the center line of our axle tube, take a look at some numbers here. Now we've got about two and seven eighths inches of roll steer on our X axis and about five inches of drop. Now, that's a pretty standard number. Um, I've seen them get a little higher uh, than that on roll steer. It, you know, you will have more with the right rear in equation because the right rear does go back, so that number will be about a half inch higher. All right, so let's raise our lower rod up two holes. Now, we're going two holes just for demonstration purposes. I usually do just one hole at a time, but uh, for demonstration, we'll do two holes. And if you was indexed, which indexing means going closer to the center line of the axle tube, like raising your rod on the birdcage, speeds everything up. And we'll get into that a little bit later. We'll just move some rods around and look at some numbers. But you can kind of see what happened there. It wasn't a huge change. You know, rods are pretty symmetrical now. And raising the rod will give you a good bit of more roll steer and a little bit of instant traction when doing that. But it's more roll steer oriented than it is instant. And that's how you kind of want to view it. So... Let's go in here and uh, make another change. And I'm gonna drop it this time, just to kind of show what happens. And initial position doesn't change a whole lot. Once you, you know, change the rod, the initial position changes slightly. And when you raise rod, you lose bites. And when you lower your lower rod, you'll gain a little bit of bite. So here's the lower rod, it's down now. And let's look at the position and a lot more cam over into the spring as you can see a lot of cam over and we lost a decent amount of roll steer doing that so you, you know you kind of tighten it up a little roll steer you know and it's a pretty good go-to adjustment um, but I wouldn't go too crazy with it if you do plan to adjust something like that so this is a video of what cam over looks like and cam over is when the bird cage angle is almost the same as the upper rod angle in full droop or more and if it exceeds that angle it'll actually lock in a position and you can bend some stuff and it, it just causes some funky things to happen you can kind of see here the lower rod was kind of indexed into the bird cage kind of flat and upper rod had a lot of steep angle in it and this is you know not really the greatest left rear bar angle setup you know because like I said you can get it really funky and it does some really funky things but we had to do this on this car particularly because we did not have enough left rear travel even with shock extensions so this was like a crutch trying to fix this guy's car and I was trying to see what was going on because it was really acting funky so here's a picture of the cam over it was slot cam over but let's try to simulate that and it took me a minute to get this uh, CAD 3D model here to where that car was and that was a little bit of an older car and it took me a while because I haven't been on that kind of left rear geometry in a very long time but you know just for 
the sake of people knowing, you know, I kind of wanted to show it. So I had to index both the upper and lower closer to the center line of the birdcage and raise the upper rod just to try to get that geometry in that video, you know, to where it was the same. And I was just like, as I was doing this, I was just really shocked at how, you know, wonky some cars you have to get just to get them to work right. And so here we go. Here's the animated view. And you can see how it right, you know, almost cams over right there. And this is almost identical to what you saw in the video there. And you can see how much, you know, it cams back onto the spring. And see, like I said, when you have one that cams that much, when you let off the gas, the car tends to set down a little more because it kind of cams away as it goes up. It still increases in load, but it still cams away. So it's more likely to set down with this kind of geometry than it is to want to stay up and keep roll steering. So here you can see you know the cam over this is when the the angle of the upper rod and the bird cage extend past you know a, a symmetrical straight line so this is when you bend and break stuff because it actually locks into position when it gets like this and it's it's not a good situation to be in this also will decrease a little bit of the overall drop in the car having this kind of left rear four link setup and it's just not a good left rear layout period so let's talk about how to tune your left rear and things to look for so a good starting point on your bar angles is 25 to 35 degrees on your upper and 10 to 17 on your lower this is a good baseline starting point depending on how free or how tight you want to be you know and how much roll steer you want now when viewing the rear suspension you gotta think like this the right rear gets you in the corner and the left rear gets you off the corner. And that is the best way to view the rear suspension of these cars. Now we're not talking about the right front because you know you're always steering on the right front, but this is just rear suspension only. Now let's talk about freeing up using the left rear. Now there's a few things you can do, you know, but you gotta think what happens when you make each change. So you can raise the lower rod for add a roll steer, add rebound, which keeps the left rear from separating so fast. You can raise an upper, give you some more uh, roll steer along with the lower, and decrease drop will take out some drive in the car. But if you decrease drop, you need to add a little bit of roll steer to the right rear to compensate for the loss in roll steer. Next, let's talk about how to tighten up using the left rear. Now, there are a few different things you can do, and they're all fairly effective in tightening up. So you can drop the lower rod to decrease roll steer, you can remove rebound, which will increase separation and give you a little more instant drive. Drop an upper rod will also decrease roll steer. And always run, I, I love running a front shock, so I always say run a left rear front shock. Now that we've talked about some ways to tighten up and free up using the left rear, let's talk about some things to look for so you can take them, set up changes, and know what to apply them to in these situations. So if you're tight on throttle, and you, you can free up, you know, using the methods I told you. If you have no forward drive in the car, you can tighten up. Tailing off late exit is another need to tighten up situation. No left rear tire temp, and if you're free, that means you're not using the left rear enough. Cars that usually don't generate a lot of heat in the left rear tend to use up the right rear a lot more. And you, that's something you don't want because you'll end up fading away if it's a long race. Now, if you're in a corner and your car's sitting down a lot, whether it's just off the gas a little bit or really on the brakes trying to get the car wheeled up and slick, you don't want the car sitting down a whole lot. You want a little bit of travel, but not left rear setting down. You know, that takes away a lot of the roll steer, and these cars are roll steer dependent. You just need to adjust it with bars, angles, and stuff like that, right and left rear, to, to compensate for that. But when a car sits down, you end up getting a little tight entering. You might be a little tight on your throttle pickup, too, because you have more left rear separation and no roll steer. So you want to keep that car up and steering, and that's why I'm such a big fan of left rear front shot, because it helps that, you know. So this, that's some things you can look for and to help tuning your left rear suspension, you know, looking at it. You know, like I said, it's an exit, center off, exit kind of deal where it, it's most effective. And that's where you want to treat it is, you know, your center off. And right rear gets you in, left rear gets you off. Always remember that. If you made it this far in the video, I appreciate you staying and watching. And I hope you take something from this and be able to apply it to your racing program and improve your racing program. 
And as always, if you like this video, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. You can always follow me on Twitter, Facebook, Dirt Late Mall Tech Tips on Facebook, and Patreon also. And feel free to message me. I'm always available to help. So don't be afraid to message me. Support your local racetrack and your favorite race driver to ensure the health of our sport. And as always, drive hard and take chances.